Solidar. Well occupiers, did the comms of Wagner's group help you? Prigoshian gathered the remnants of his tattered convict army near Bakhmut, more or less combat-ready units and asked the Russian defense ministry to cover his rear and threw his convicts at Solidar. Guess what the result was? According to the results of the storming of Solidar, practically all the units of the Wagner terrorist group that took part in the storming lost their combat effectiveness. There is no way to restore it in the shortest possible time, so many convicts have not yet been gathered. Untrained recruits are being dragged to the Bakhmut bridgehead, because the battle for Bakhmut cannot be won by convicts. And all this against the background of the lack of full control over Solidar. The northwestern part of the city, beyond which begin the defensive lines of the Ukrainian armed forces and which the Wagnerians no longer have the resources to assault, remains inaccessible to the occupants, despite their intensive attempts. For more than a day now, Prigozhin's media resources and the Kremlin's propagandists have been embellishing the situation in Solidar, trying to give the loss of the last combat-ready resource in the battle for a small town some epic significance. Even to me in the commentary comes those who cry about the powerful victory of the occupation troops in Solidar and the encirclement of Ukrainian fighters. Some people want the victory of Putin's army so much that they cannot understand that it has already lost. Not only under Bakhmut or Solidar, but everywhere. All the Kremlin narratives they used to scare the whole world have crumbled, except one, nuclear weapons. But seeing all those lies, do you still hope to win? But let's go back to Solidar. CNN journalists visited the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces near Solidar and reported that they saw no signs of Ukrainian soldiers preparing to retreat. Logistical and artillery units continue to provide steady support to the Ukrainian soldiers fighting in the city itself. So whether you saw it or not, Solidar became not just a meat grinder to grind up the colossal resource of Prigozhin's army, but also the starting point for his own peak. After all, all these movements would subside very quickly, amid a very difficult to hide disgrace. And while he was busy destroying his group of cons at this time there were startling appointments in the enemy's military command. General Gerasimov was appointed commander of the group of Russian forces, and Surovikin was demoted to the level of deputy. At first sight simply the next reshuffle. The result of this reshuffle will not change, because the whole bunch of incompetent war criminals are destined one way or another to become generals of defeat, but something else is interesting in what is happening. The old non-professional team, which will not change the situation in the combat zone critically, will return to the command of the Russian troops, but in the domestic arena and even a little deeper, very unpleasant changes for Wagner's group and Prigozhin personally may occur. After all, he was the one who contributed to the persecution of Gerasimov, after the failed invasion of Ukraine.